Hey you guys, it is Monday night and that means it's time for Let's Talk About. So if you haven't seen us before, you'll be going, who the heck are you? So I'm here with Kim Thompson. Kim is a certified, she should be certified, clinical, aer <laughs> clinical aromatherapist. <laughs> and she's an oils guru. And my name's Jeremy Thewlis. And I don't know, am I getting close to becoming an oils guru? No. <laughs> what about last week with your non-compliant? Yeah, apart from the occasional non-compliant. Yeah. Anyway, uh, so my background is actually teaching and motivation, motivational speaking, and I am becoming an absolute oils fan. So it's been it's been really good. So every Monday night we rock up here with you, and we want to provide you with some great you know, information, some great entertainment. We want to make it fun, don't we? Because it is fun. And um, I don't know, it's, on my cue card, it says guaranteed laughs. Like, but we'll see how we go. <laughs> anyway, we, um, because we want to give you the best information. And let's be honest, there's a lot of dodgy stuff out there, isn't there, really? So we want to give you the right information so that you can use oils get healthy and also when you're sharing with your friends you you can share with confidence because you know that what you're saying is genuine is that about it yeah so tonight we're all about debunking myths yeah that's true we're going to talk about well i already know how to tell if oils are fake or not do you yeah i, I know lots of stuff anyway let's cue the music here we go our theme song Herb. yo we should talk about this. People might misunderstand what we're trying to say. Here we go. This is like our warm up. Well, we got some guys to get on. Here we go. You ready? One, two, three. Fake, fake oils. oils. Let's talk, <laughs> talk about, about fake you oils. And me. <laughs> All the good things and the bad things that may be. Let's talk about fake, fake oils. oils. Let's talk about fake Thanks. oils. And how to tell the difference. Let's talk about fake, fake oils. oils. Let's talk about fake oils. Okay, so we are, tonight we are talking about fake oils. And one of the reasons for that, I guess, is there's a lot of fake oils out there, aren't there? A lot of adulterated oils. Yeah, yeah. In fact, as essential oils, I mean, I don't know, like go back a few years, I had no clue what essential oils were at all. But now I'm starting to see them everywhere. I mean, as in literally everywhere, you know, chemist shops, uh, I haven't seen it in a supermarket yet, but $2 shops, you name it, um, department stores, where else are we seeing them? Everywhere. Okay. So... Airports. Air oh, yeah, yeah. So the question is, like, how do you tell the difference between what's fake and what's real? So I've been doing a little bit of research. I reckon I, reckon I could easily tell what's the difference between a fake oil and a real oil. Okay, let's see how you go. Do you want me to start? Okay, yeah. I actually, sorry, I actually wrote down a list. I reckon I've got, I've got five ways that I reckon you can tell. And maybe you guys have, maybe you've heard some of these before yourself. Maybe you're sitting there thinking, dang, I can easily tell the difference between a fake and a real oil. Okay, so uh, should, we tr should we start at the beginning? Mm -hmm. Okay, so number one is when you drip a pure essential oil on a piece of paper, it doesn't leave, you know, like a, well, I'll say an oily ring on it. So. You think that that's true? Yeah, be, yeah, because. Do you think that that's true? Do you think that if you drip a pure essential oil onto a bit of paper that it doesn't leave an oil slick? Yeah, no, it's got to because oils are a volatile liquid, so therefore they're just gonna they're gonna evaporate off and they're gonna leave nothing. Boom boom. Get Here's something I prepared earlier. Well, actually, Jeremy did. I got him to write it up. Well, and we just waited until yeah. they dried. So yeah. So let, let, I'll just, let me just put my hand over here. <laughs> so he was half right. The most essential oils, when dripped on a bit of paper, so this is where we dripped the lavender. And Nothing we, there. We drew a line around it. Nothing. Didn't there. leave anything on the bit of paper. This is where we dripped the peppermint. Nothing there. Nothing there. But this is where we drip the sandalwood. Still there, oily residue. And this is where we drip the patchouli. They are all pure young living essential oils. The thing about this particular myth, would you like to oh, hold paper? that? Yeah. 
is that some of the heavier <laughs> essential oils like sandalwood, vetiver, patchouli, even German chamomile do actually still leave a oily residue so that isn't a very good way of knowing whether an essential oil is pure or not so that myth has been busted but the lavender didn't oh okay do you get points for like half busted okay does anyone think jeremy should get half a point yeah put up your hand if you are, i should get half a point okay. all right number two all right so all right yeah okay so all right uh number two you can feel the difference between a real oil and a fake, I mean an adulterated essential oil. Okay, so you'll need a mask for I, this experiment. I guarantee it. You can tell. You need a mask. Okay. Because, but what do you think will happen? Well, because I think real essential oils don't have that greasy feel about them. Okay. Like they're, because, yeah, again, they, yeah. Okay, uh, hold on. So, all right. All right, me, so you need a mask for this experiment. Take my glasses off. I so, just have on one, one, hand, one thumb, I'm going to drip some olive oil. Okay. And on the other one, Alrighty, I'm, I'm fully... going to drip some sandalwood. Okay, I'm fully blind now. I gotta trust you. All right. So where, do, where should I put my thumbs? Right there. Okay. So on one hand, I'm. This is. What did you say? Nothing. I'm going to drip some lavender oil on one thumb. Okay. I have I to. It's yep. going to run off. So feel that between your... Okay, um, I can, well, I can smell that. That's definitely... Okay, well, no smelling because that's not part of the experiment. Oh, on okay. the other one, I'm going to drip some olive oil. Okay, so that just... That, that doesn't... That doesn't feel... Olive oil. That doesn't feel oily Okay, what about this one? This Where one's the carrier oil, the vegetable oil. Okay, is, have you put it on yet? Yep. Oh, yeah, it's a tiny little difference. Like this one... Is what? This one, yeah, so this one's lavender, I reckon, definitely. Because it's like, it feels thin and, yeah. And this one feels greasy, like, yeah, it feels like a heavy, like heavy oil. Like, yeah, this is like olive oil or something, definitely. Okay, you can take the mask off and then smell your fingers. Okay. <laughs> smell like your fingers. <laughs> I never thought that would come out of my mouth. <laughs> Next week, she'll be pulling my finger. Okay, yeah, no, so that's, that's lavender. definitely lavender. And this one. We uh -oh. didn't use the olive oil. I put sandalwood on. Yeah. Okay, now once again, the thicker oils like sandalwood, vetiver, patchouli, and German chamomile all feel greasy to the touch. So you can't actually feel so the so difference between pure essential oils and adulterated essential oils because not all essential oils feel the same anyway. So yeah. that myth has been busted. Okay, I'm putting the sandalwood on my forehead because it's really good for my skin. Okay, what's your third one? Okay, well, all right, I've, I've still got three more, so don't okay. be too smug right now. Right Thank eh? you very much. What other ways can you tell? You, you totally conned me with that. Never trust, yeah. Okay, uh, number three, the, maybe the simplest one. Pure essential oils don't freeze. So you didn't expect baby. You have an experiment that you did. You put the rose oil yeah. in the freezer and yeah. you Yeah, and it's gonna to be totally Where frozen. is it? Uh, hold on, I've got it here. I thought I'd I took it out of the freezer because obviously we're gonna do this little show here. But look, it's, With in, the ice the, it's in the ice cube. So here's one I prepared earlier. So there's no way that this is going to freeze, obviously. So this is my rose oil, has been in my bra to be warmed up. You said I could get it out with my teeth. <laughs> and your rose oil's been where? Well, not in your bra, obviously. It's been in the freezer. It's been in the freezer. Do oils How are freeze? we going to do this? Because these are worth like a million dollars. We're going to do one drop, okay? okay? So I'll do my drop and we'll see. Yeah. And then, well, this is, it's not going to come out. That's there the you go, point. there's my drop of rose. Okay, show me your. Do you want me to do the drop on your hand or mine? Okay, it's not coming out. Look, not so coming out. So essential oils. Frozen solid. Do actually freeze. Oh, actually it is frozen solid. And it is frozen. But the thing about rose right. oil, blue cypress, and thyme oil, and even some others, they actually solidify at really low temperatures. So blue cypress can actually solidify at 12 degrees. So often when it's shipped to America or Europe, where it's less than 12 degrees for a lot of the year, 
their blue cypress is solid. Okay, and so same with rose oil. That's why when I run so a workshop... So this is in I'm, here, but it's, it's just gone like super... It solidifies. Yeah. You didn't even need to freeze it. It already solidifies. So the fact that people Can think... I put that back in your bra? I'm not putting the cold one in <laughs> <laughs> People think that pure essential oils don't freeze. But there are exceptions. And okay. all liquids freeze at a certain temperature. Like if you probably put essential oils into dry ice then yeah. they would all probably freeze because it you yeah. know depending on how cold the temperature is all liquids freeze no matter what yeah well everything does freeze but just yeah i guess i, I assume that yeah, okay okay so as i said things like blue cypress and rose they actually solidify at higher than zero degrees i've still got a couple of good tricks up okay right our next one all right, um, number four, pure essential oils don't dissolve in water. Okay, have you got an experiment that shows this one? Yeah, I'll um, grab your water thing. Um, okay, so we've both got our little shot, ninja shot glasses. Um, yep. What should we put in? Let's put in some peppermint, maybe. Okay. Uh, hold on. Let's go peppermint. Okay. Oh, no, I'm Oh, oh yeah, okay, I'm, I'm putting it in mine. All right, let's put it in here. Put in a couple of drops. Okay, so it doesn't dissolve. Well, I'm going to stir it around and see if I can. Hopefully, get it. there's a peppermint in that glass. Okay. Here, you have a different one. Was that one down your bra too? No. Okay. Oh, the other thing I should say about peppermint um, for oils that are freezing is particularly with peppermint. That's a good example. Oh. Um, peppermint oil high in menthol actually doesn't freeze and peppermint oil low in menthol, so different growing conditions can contribute mm. to different amounts of menthol so menthol can actually be 30 percent or even as high as 50 percent if it's high up at the 50 percent end then it will freeze whereas if it's lower at the 30 percent end um it won't freeze so there you go so even different peppermint oils can I don't result know if, in different things i don't know if you can see that but that's definitely floating on the top like it's it's a little bit hard to see because peppermint oil is actually quite clear so okay so if essential if the way that you can tell if an yeah, essential oil so is pure is because it I doesn't dissolve the, in water i can see but the drips on the, vegetable oil so if the oil has been adulterated with vegetable yeah. oil then uh, it's not going to dissolve either. You can see it there floating on the top. I don't know, this isn't very good for television. No. <laughs> but, so if they've added carrier oil, like vegetable oil, olive oil or something like that, then it's not gonna dissolve either. And the thing so is that these the days, top. essential oil companies yeah. have access to some really sophisticated chemicals that when they extend their essential oils with these chemicals, they don't dissolve either. So you wouldn't have any idea whether the essential oil has been adulterated or not just because it doesn't dissolve. It's floating on the top. Okay, all right. right. That myth has been busted. All right, this one. You better hope this one gets right. Yeah, no, this, this one. Put that definitely. rose on my hand and sand. I know, it's beautiful, isn't it? Okay, final one. Smells like my perfume. Number five, my strongest <laughs> argument. Pure essential oils should smell like the plant they come from. So, do you, want, do you want me to test it out? Yeah. Okay. So I actually went out and bought some plants. You went out and bought some plants. Yep. Okay. So, um, let's start with the good old lavender. Okay. okay. So there's lavender. Um, well, how do we do it? We just rub the... Yeah, rub the... Okay, um, let's just rub the flower because that's, and where, then smell it. that's where it comes well, from. Well, smell so. the oil first. Now smell the yep. flower. Okay. Oh, okay. Hold on, do it again. <laughs> yeah, okay. And. Totally different. Okay. Right, 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 what about your other one? That was lavender. Maybe it's slightly different species. Because actually I couldn't get, I couldn't get English lavender. So maybe it's a different species. Um, I also, I couldn't get peppermint. But I got spearmint. So okay. dig out spearmint. I've got some spearmint right spearmint. here. All right. There's my spearmint plant and a healthy looking plant it is too. Okay, let's go. Oh, love that smell. All right. Scrunch it up. Because once again, where do they get it from? Spearmint leaves. Yeah, that doesn't smell right either. It smells different. 
So you might be led to think that our spearmint and lavender, which doesn't smell exactly like the plant, might be adulterated. When in fact, one of the main things that can make an essential oil smell slightly different to the plant and even slightly different to an essential oil from year to year is because of the growing conditions. So, um, and a great example of this is actually Young Living's peppermint. So I want to do another blind study with you. So yeah. I'd like you okay. to put on your mask so that I can demonstrate yeah. this. Okay. So I've got two peppermints here. Okay, that's spearmint, so that's not going to help me. I've got oh, two peppermints. So... I've got an older peppermint from yeah. a few years ago, and I've got a brand new peppermint okay. from one of our most recent orders. Okay. Okay. I've been so... doing this long enough. I know what peppermint should smell like. Okay, so this is the first one. Okay. And this is the second. Okay, can I try number one again? Um, I'm gonna go number one was the new one and number two was the old one. <laughs> no. Go again, close your eyes. Oh, okay. Oh, actually, I swapped them around, sorry. Okay, that's so familiar, yeah. I thought you knew what peppermint smelled like. I don't know. All I, I'm, I'm smelling about 27 different essential oils now, plus a couple of trees. Couple so, of plants. Okay, so, so, so the first I... one was the older one. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. And the second one was the newer one. I always thought that the... I always thought the, the new one, yeah, uh, smelled a bit sweeter, but actually maybe... No, I think the older one smells sweeter. Yeah, true. So... That's why I thought. It, it does, you're right. So the thing oh. about... Oh, so you can smell it more on the lids when you smell the lids. The thing about our yeah. peppermint oil is that Young Living had to yeah, swap so farms and suppliers for where they got their peppermint oil because the current farm of which they were sourcing it from yeah. couldn't keep up with production. So they swapped to a different farm from Washington State. And when they swapped over, I started getting all of these messages from all you guys saying, oh my God, the peppermint smells different. I think it's off. There's something wrong with it. Okay. Now it wasn't, it's just that it's grown on the opposite side of America. It's grown under different, like in different soils that have different pH, different altitude, different temperatures, all of those kinds of things can mm -hmm. actually affect the smell of an essential oil. So you can't test whether an essential oil is pure just by the smell. Yeah. And I guess you can, yeah, testing, uh, doing a smell comparison with a similar oil from the same company, can't you? No, because as I said, with the two peppermints, um, you know, when Young Living swapped over, they smell completely different. Okay. Um, and the, that, that upset people a little bit, didn't it? Yeah, because they thought that, you know, there must be something wrong with our peppermint. And um, But Dr. Mike Book, the science officer with Young Living, he actually thinks that the quality of this new peppermint, as far as the constituents when they test the oils, are a lot higher than the old peppermint. So, you know, as far as the benefits go, it's much better than the oldest sweeter smelling one. Which brings me to another way that they actually change the smell of essential oils. And it's called rectification, okay? Rectification is actually a fractal distillation process. I know they're all big words, but I'm gonna explain them. Yeah. So basically what happens with rectification is um, the main oils that they do this with are things like peppermint and eucalyptus. So they do it with eucalyptus, um, they distill the oil, and after the oil's been distilled, they then do a double distillation, which is how a particular essential oil eucalyptus gets its name. So they double do day. the double distillation. And that double distillation then removes certain constituents um, and, enhance, and means that there's more of the, in the case of eucalyptus, there's more eucalyptol or what we call 1,8-cineol. So why do they, why do they, get rid of the constituents. So they get rid of an aldehyde, it's iso something or other aldehyde, I can never remember the long name, but they get rid of that because it actually makes like a tickle in the back of people's throat and they cough, okay? So they don't want that in people's eucalyptus. So they take that particular aldehyde out through this double distillation or rectification process mm. and then you're not getting the whole oil 
Um, so you don't get those same benefits either of the whole oil versus the oil that has been, so Young Living doesn't do this, mm -hmm. um, but other essential oil companies do so that, you know, they're mainly wanting to use their essential oils for cleaning or, you know, other purposes. So therefore yeah. they're okay with it not having all of the benefits of the non-rectified um, eucalyptus oil. Mm. The other reason that they do it is for things like peppermint oil. So I know Kelly um, once asked me, she said, oh, hey, I get all these comments all the time from people when I cook with oils and they say, oh, you shouldn't cook with essential oils because um, essential oils that are used in food, like peppermint essence, have actually been rectified and they've had ingredients that's what they say. But so the like, constituents, they've had the bad ingredients. They've had constituents out. taken out of the peppermint oil to make it safer. When in fact, it's not taken out to make it safer. <laughs> it's taken out to make it sweeter, both in aroma and in taste. Okay. So um, one of the things that Jeremy said to me, you should have done a taste test with the peppermint, was that the newer peppermint isn't as sweet tasting as the older peppermint. And that is because, well, you know, we weren't ever rectifying our oils, mm. but that's probably because it's got the higher amount of that constituent in there when other essential oil companies rectify um, their oils, do the rectification process, and they remove constituents to make their peppermint oil smell sweeter and taste sweeter um, mm. So, yeah, and another way that they do fractional distillation is actually with the Ylang Ylang, and we're going to get to see that when we go over to the Ecuador farm Ecuador. Yeah, yeah. Um, in a few weeks because what they do with the – there's different ways you can fractionally do fractional distillation, and what, and with the Ylang Ylang what they do is um, – so instead of distilling the oil twice, they actually – distill the plant matter and the different qualities of the oils come off at different rates. So they have four different times throughout that distillation process that they harvest the oil. So one, two, three, and complete. And so the first one is the better quality ylang ylang because it comes off first off the distillation. So that's also called fractional distillation where, you know, it's broken down into fractions. So that's mm -hmm. how it gets its name. But um, Vicky Pollard, if you're watching, fractional distillation with a fractionating column. There's some good science there. So that brings me to my point in that the only way you can actually test whether an essential oil is pure or not is actually with some pretty enhanced scientific machinery. I just happen to have a gas spectrometer around the corner. I'll just go and grab that. <laughs> so Young Living um, test all of their oils multiple times. They yeah. test it before they bought, you know, like... It, but basically, you know, I think it's like 45 times they test it three times. So there's a yeah. lot of testing done on Young Living's oils with a lot of fancy machinery, mm -hmm. um, including GCMS. Um, and that measures the That's constituents. Gas, chromat gas chromatography mass spectrometer. Very so, good, Jeremy. Yeah. Um, and that tests that the various constituents are present in the oil or whether there's too much. They also test for heavy metals. They test for yeah. all kinds of things to make sure that the essential oils that you're using with your family and, you know, in your home are exactly the right amount of constituents that should be there. Because at the end of the day, there's no one policing this, okay? Like there's no one out there making sure that if a company labels their oils as 100% pure, therapeutic, certified, whatever, all of those terms are terms that essential oil companies use in marketing to differentiate themselves from other essential oils. Like even in terms of therapeutic grade, 25 years ago when mean? Gary Young started Young Living, he started using the term therapeutic grade because he wanted to differentiate between Young Living's oils and the oils that he was finding in shops in America. But in terms of who sets the standards, no one sets the standards, no one polices it. Mm. Um, it's up to the individual companies themselves to actually um, police this stuff and to have their own standards. Um, and you know, at the end of the day, people can say what they want. So the reason that I absolutely love Young Living is that I can go to the farms, I can see for myself yeah. how the products are growing, I can be a part of the distillation process, I see the oils come out of the, the cookers and into the, you know, condensed, kind of cooled down, separated, tested and bottled. And, you know, you can't adulterate that because you've got hundreds of us Young Living members standing there watching. <laughs> so, um, you know, like... 
buy essential oils from a company you can trust yeah. they're totally open transparent and ethical and that's what young living is so absolutely hopefully we've shed some light i've debunked some of jeremy's myths thanks for making Myth me busters. thanks for making me feel bad about all those things but yeah. but it's it's true I like and if so if you hear people say all those things you know unfortunately sadly it's they're not true no so. Yeah. So, so it makes it even more important to be buying from a reputable company. So just between you and me, Young Living sell by far the purest oils on the planet. So and if, if you want the best oils the and they're the purest, then that's where you go to. So make sure that you tag your team so they also know um, that you know the truth and combat yeah. some of the myths that are out there and share this video. Alrighty, that was good. Thank Thanks, you. Thanks, guys. I always learn something new. Any comments down below? Always good to hear what you think. Uh, and again, if you have any ideas for what you'd like us to be talking about on Let's Talk About, we'd love to, to get your feedback and your ideas about that. So we will see you next Monday night. We're counting down to going to Ecuador. That's not far away. We'll All see right. you next time. See you guys. Bye.